Shamai Palb, howdy everyone, and today I'm looking at another of the zoom lens options for Sony's mirrorless APS-C E-mount cameras. The Sony EPZ 18-105mm f4 G OSS. It's about $550 in the US and £430 in the UK. On paper, it certainly looks like a really nice option. That zoom range of 18 to 105 mm is the full frame equivalent of 27 to 158 mm, which is a great zoom range considering the lens's constant maximum aperture of f4. At the end of the zoom range, this lens lets in twice as much light as other zoom lenses that end at f5.6, and it can give you more out of focus backgrounds at the end of the zoom range too, although they won't be very out of focus. The maximum aperture of f4 might also help your camera to get a more positive autofocus lock in your pictures. I found that when using the Sony 18 to 135 mm f3.5 to 5.6 lens along with a polarizing filter, it struggled a bit to lock focus when I was zoomed in and the aperture was only f5.6. Well, this f4 lens I found worked a lot better with its autofocus. It's also an interesting zoom lens option for the number of special features it has, which are designed especially for video work. Firstly, that constant maximum aperture of f4 which I just mentioned means you can zoom in and out without changing your exposure settings. Secondly, the lens has no focus breathing, so if you focus back and forth, even at 105mm, the image will not zoom in and out. I forgot to test if the lens is parfocal though, sorry. And finally, it has a fully electronic power zoom mechanism. The zoom ring and zoom switch are connected to a zoom motor, which will only operate when the camera is turned on. Here's the zoom switch working at the slowest speed I could get. Now at a medium speed. And now the fastest speed with the switch fully pushed down. So it's quite smooth but you can't get a very slow, gradual zoom action. And for those who are interested, this is me turning the zoom ring as slowly as I can. Bit jerky there with the final results, really. Here's me turning the zoom ring at a medium speed. And here's the fastest speed I could master. Make of that what you will, Personally, for video work, I still prefer to have a zoom ring that's mechanically directly controlled to the zoom mechanism and well damped for smooth operation. I feel a bit more in control that way. Let's look a bit more at the lens's build quality. Although it's one of the biggest zoom lenses for Sony's APS-C cameras, it's actually a little smaller in your hand than I thought it might be. It feels really solid, being made of metal, but it's not very heavy, weighing about a pound, under half a kilogram. Its filter thread size is 72 millimeters. The lens mount does not have an extra weather sealing gasket, and what with this lens's dependence on electronics, I would really hesitate to take it out in any kind of rain. The focus mechanism is electronically coupled to the focus motor, and the manual focus ring turns smoothly, giving you good control if you're focusing manually. On my Sony a7R II, the autofocus motor was silent and quite quick, although it did seem to jitter a bit when shooting video. I probably just needed to adjust my settings a bit there, though slow it down a little. This lens features image stabilization, or OSS, as Sony calls it. Here's some footage at 105mm with OSS turned off, and here it is turned on. As you can see, it works very effectively and smoothly, being very helpful for video work. Normally, this lens comes with a free lens hood. Mine got lost, unfortunately. Overall, the lens's build quality is just excellent, although it's not a compact design and its electronic zoom mechanism may not be to everyone's taste. Let's see now about the lens's image quality on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, my little Sony A5100. Inner camera corrections are turned on. 
At 18mm and f4, in the middle of the image, the picture quality is very sharp and punchy. The corners of the image are a bit soft. At f5.6, there's a tiny improvement. At f8, a bigger improvement. And at f11, another tiny improvement. At f16, though, the image becomes noticeably soft due to the effects of diffraction. Let's zoom in halfway to about 50mm. At f4, the lens is, again, really sharp in the middle of the image. The corners are a little better at 50mm than they were at 18mm now, but still noticeably softer. However, stop down to f5.6 for a nice sharp image there, and at f8 and f11, perfection. Finally, let's zoom all the way in to 105mm. At f4, and in the middle of the image, again, we get a fantastically sharp picture. Corners, again, are a bit soft. At f5.6, they're about the same, but at f8, there is a good improvement. So, overall, the 18 to 105mm f4 puts in a relatively solid performance, being fantastically sharp in the middle of your images with quite good contrast, but corner image quality is a bit weak at wider apertures. I think it's a bit sharper than Sony's other APS-C zoom lens options though, and it's plenty sharp enough for 4K video work. Let's see about distortion and vignetting. I had to shoot in RAW for this test and process with some third-party editing software, as Sony's cameras and RAW conversion software don't allow you to turn distortion correction off for this lens, I've learned that that's normally a very bad sign. At the widest angle of 18mm, this lens shows some pin cushion distortion in the edges, very unusual at the widest angle of a zoom lens. Zoom in as far as 50mm and we enter a strange world of extreme pin cushion distortion that only gets worse as you zoom in to 105mm. Very bizarre. Vignetting is always quite heavy at f4 and still present at f5.6 and f8. You will definitely need in-camera corrections or editing in post with this lens. Thankfully, the in-camera corrections still work when you're shooting video. I forgot to shoot my normal test for close-up image quality this time, sorry. At its widest angle, the lens can shoot as closely as 45cm, and if you zoom in, it can only focus as closely as 95cm, a weak performance really. It's not a good lens for macro photography at all. Finally, bokeh. This lens will not get you very out of focus backgrounds. When it does, at wide angles, the quality of those out of focus backgrounds seems to be a bit nervous. Zoom in though, and the bokeh looks a little softer. Not great though. Overall, this lens's build quality is quite nice, and I'd say that its image quality is boringly consistent. It's fairly sharp, although the corners are not great. Its work against bright lights and the quality of its bokeh are okay. Its distortion is pretty wild though. Of all the standard zoom lenses for Sony's APS-C mirrorless cameras, I'd say that this is probably the most attractive to me, the best of a fairly average bunch. For video work, it's very accomplished. For still images, its quality is reasonably good, quite workable, nothing more.